street ahead of us is the Border Union Railway's proudest feature, a 14 arch Shanken Viaduct. But first, it's the E Shields Tunnel and back. And this time I'm above the portal. This makes it look slightly more impressive than it actually is. But yeah, I've scrambled up this pointless bank. I'm going to give you another tour because I don't think the one we did in our last video was it as, as informative as it could be. From this angle, you might actually be tricked into thinking the E-Shields is long, but it really isn't. We come down this bank without me tripping over and falling. There you go, you can see right through the E-Shields tunnel. 66 yards in length, and it's basically an early version of those concrete tunnels you get on the motorways, you know, where you see the railway line sort of go underneath. And it does have some interesting stuff. There's uh, all these insulated cable hook type things throughout the bore. So it has slightly more going for it than you might initially realise. Of course though, you can still hear the ghost of Andrew. Oh man, this is pathetic. This is the worst tunnel I've ever been in. Worst move I've ever made, definitely. I mean, it's not even... Look how small it is. It took us two seconds to come through it. There's nothing interesting. Look at these cycle path through it. There's no side little bits like there was in the other tunnel. There's fuck all here. I mean, this is awful. It's the worst tunnel. Side the shit. shit. But, like I say, the problem with it is that at one point the tunnel was buried. And we've been left with this horrible ramp, which leads you out onto the other side. So it just feels like you're about to bash your head off the top of it when you're coming through. Here we go. We've emerged at the other side of the A72. And that is the E Shield Tunnel. Here we go, first impressions of the Hawkhead Viaduct on the outskirts of Inner Leafman. And already, it looks like they've ruined it with this stupid extra bit. But will the structure be enough to save it? Let's have a look down the side. It's kind of like a bridge on a bridge. And that is the River Tweed flowing underneath it. Now this viaduct here is actually part of a set. The other one is further down towards Peebles. It's called the, it's called the uh, Horseborough Viaduct. Which is actually kind of amusing because this is the Hawkhead Viaduct and yet it has horses by it. So really, it's kind of ironic and they should switch names. Well, that's not really that ironic. Nice way structure, though. It goes on longer than you think it will when walking across it. This triumphant looking stone bridge crosses the River Tweed and it has rather an amusing name, or at least amusing if you happen to like still game. Isn't that right, Andrew? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is the Yeah Bridge, spelt Y A I R. But I'm assuming the pronunciation is exactly the same as everybody's favourite London Yes word. Isn't that right, Andrew? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it's actually quite peaceful down here. You've got the uh, river coming underneath the arch in quite a nice way. Fortunately, there's a bit of traffic noise, but they're like the bridge is traffic light controlled. But I think it should get a thumbs up. Hello, I'm Charles. 
welcome to another episode of Roadside Orc. We are near to the Barnes Viaduct near Hoik. And today we are cooking both sausages and bacon. All of the sausages are composed of bovine material so they don't qualify and should be thrown into the bin. This is Barnes Viaduct. It's uh, just south of Hoik. It's one of two on this section of the line with uh, the Shanken Viaduct being the defining feature of this section of the railway. And this one seems to be going on, going with some repair works at the moment. Um, I'm not quite sure. I was hoping to be able to get up there, but I think with all this going on, I'm just going to stay down here today. It's nice. There's four four arches to it. And a lot of machinery. But yeah, if we come round this side, you can see where they've started patching it up with new stonework. But then you come over here and you can see the transition and there's the brickwork again. So it looks like that's going to be the new facing. Hopefully that will uh, over time will blend in and fit in with the rest of the structure but at the moment it just looks a bit new and a bit out of place. Definitely prefer the uh, older look. Now the sun rarely graces the arches of the Shanken Viaduct so I feel quite lucky to be here today with these conditions on it. Look at that. It goes on and on, and not that on. There's a great structure. I've never actually been up close to it like this before. I've always just kind of seen it from the road, seen it from passing. So it's good to actually get up and have a proper look at it. But of course you can't tell you've properly looked at it until you've gone up to the top. Continue the theme of horses and viaducts. There's a couple here. One of them's already gone to the other side. Look how grand this place is. It kind of, in a strange way, reminds me of the Gladogo Viaduct, just with more brick patches. There's a lot of uh, odd patchwork going on, so I'll come up close to one of the pillars and get a proper look at that. Hopefully with the horse still in frame. It's quite a wee horse. There you, go, you can see all the patchwork that's taken place to the structure over the years. There. Just scrambled up the bank to show you the top of this thing. Now it gives you a good appreciation for how high up we are. So earlier I was filming down on that bridge looking back at it. The horse now looks very, very distant. And here is the top of the structure, complete with a bitchy sign telling you not to cross. The yellow is keeping kept in reasonable condition. There's not much preventing you, but I'll probably stay here this side. There's not much to see when you go across anyway. So that's the top for you. And look at the landscape around. Deep into the borders countryside. There we go, I have come into Shanken Viaduct itself, right into the heart of the beast. So I'll give you a quick tour of this. So we are inside one of the archways. And I'm using a different torch, there's this kind of cool ring around it. But anyway, that's irrelevant to what we're looking at here. We'll come through to this first wee chamber. And then, never, but you never would have thought these were hollow inside. Having this, it just improves the whole thing dramatically. So not only is it a great structure, you've got this internal fun part. So let's come back through. See the daylight again. And here's the really interesting bit. If you were braver, you could climb down that ladder right into the uh, middle of the viaduct here, or this pillar. Again you can see a lot more space, I'm not going to do any closer in case I accidentally fall down. I'm sure you can appreciate it. it's a bit 
precarious in here. And as always, there's a dodgy beer can on the ground. Yeah, I bet you never thought you would see the inside of a viaduct. I never thought I'd see the inside of a viaduct. Now let's come back out. And there we go. My route to freedom. So this is it, the Shanken Viaduct. Passed here many times, but I've never actually stopped to look at it properly. What an experience it is. 14 arches. A really grand structure that's been coupled together in places with a mix of brick and stone. And just to top it all off, you can go inside. How many viaducts can you see you can get inside of? Not many. So this definitely deserves a thumbs up. Thank you.